Hello everyone, it is Nostalgic Gamer Princess and I have been drinking. So let's get started. <laughs> uh, oh you guys, I'm looking so fly. Look at me. Sorry I haven't played this in a while so I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so. Let's run through the checklist. Holy shit. Um, when am I supposed to go to this? 7 p.m., right. Um... Figuring it all out. What did I find out next? Shit, it's been a while since I played this and I don't remember anything anymore. Um, Gabby, she was just running around. I guess I have to call Frank because I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do next. Mystery number, Frank. Oh, I had just called Vince Corsetti. Hello? Hi Frank, I got good news and weird news. It's <laughs> a good way to start a conversation. The good news is that I know the truth. Those assailants have definite ties to Vincent Corsetti. He's our man. Weird news is I just got a very odd phone call within seconds of finishing my call to Vincent. I love how I'm having this private conversation outside of their home, by the way. Really? From who? That Eric guy, the one who always seems to be lurking in a corner. Eric Larson, of all people. The Fed, Eric Larson. I like that one better. Yeah, Eric Larson. We've met. What did he want? Uh, he wanted to meet me. I guess he needed to talk, uh, needs to talk to me about something, but he was pretty cryptic. It was something he insisted on telling me in person. Maybe you should find out what it is. I don't know where he is, though. Did you say we'd meet at the mall or something? I get the feeling he might be able to tell us something worthwhile. I agree, but, alright, but after that we need to talk about all this. Okay, I guess it couldn't hurt. You're right, I'll meet him and see what he has to tell me. I'm assuming I'm going to the mall. Like, that's the only reasonable thing. I mean, that's where I met him last time, right? Hold on. Do I have anything in my mailbox? No, not there. There we go. I'm also making Christmas presents for everyone right now. Kind of. what I get? Free wall upgrade. You know what? My walls are perfect. Thank you. Let's go to the mall. Sammy, I don't like that you're up there. So I've been drinking, like I said. I've been having... Apple cider and fireball whiskey. We call it angry balls because fireball and um, currently I'm drinking angry orchard, so that is what I'm doing. All right, where is that fucker? I hope you all have been having a great time doing, you know, whatever it is you guys do. Watching games, working, leading your normal adult life and all that shit. Strange stranger, what is this? Eric Larson is one of blah blah blah. Oh, I'm supposed to call him? Well, I just came here for nothing, didn't I? Let's see if my fucker husband is here. No, <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say. He's a nice man. <laughs> he really is. He's just not very he doesn't pay much attention. Maybe I should buy a bunch of meds. Yeah, you know what, let's go buy some meds. If I'm not gonna be like a bad girl and steal shit or whatever, then I might as well just buy a bunch of fucking meds. I'll call Eric after I consult all the girls because they're depressed as shit right now. But anyways, like I said, I'm kind of sort of making Christmas presents for everyone at my workplace. Um, they're just like little tiny Christmas cards with a candy cane and like a Santa attached. What is this? Promotes relaxation. Um, muscle relaxant. What is this? Ooh, a body bar. PTSD medication. What the fuck? I mean, yeah, sure, let's buy one of each, I guess. Oh god, there's ten of them? Alright, let's see what happens. So I have them here, right? In my purse. Let's see how my composure is. Um... That's my appearance. Fucking go. Composure. Happiness. So, use. Oh, Jesus! Did you see that? This improves my social. What is this? Anxiety meds. Nothing improves my appearance, though? Oh, well, I guess I'm just always gonna be ugly then. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, look at me strut. I belong on the rubway. Rubway. Oh, God. The runway. Fuck Gabby. I can do it all. But yeah, so I'm making these little Christmas cards for my coworkers. Um, a little candy cane and a little Santa chocolate. 
or uh, multiple chocolates actually. But yeah, um, I remember my mom, she was like really interesting about cards. Like she's very like all about keeping the tradition and being like, no, you have to send cards, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she was just like, here, here's a couple of nice cards. Give them to, you know, people that you love and like managers and stuff. What is this? Composure need low? Well then, use. How many fucking composure things do I need to do? There we go. What helped me? Equity medication? I don't know. Whatever. Um, I'll just stand outside until it's seven. Or should I just go to inside the right now? The swooping falcon descends upon the hunter, knocking the rifle from his grasp. Of course she's watching something that has to do with guns. Like, Bree is all about guns. In a desperate attempt to defend himself. But, um, but yeah, I just thought it was really shitty of, like, you know, well, here we go, like, here's, um, a nice card for just, like, the managers and stuff, but, like, what about the other people? Like, they're just as important. So I got little, like, mini ear cards for them with, like, little treats attached. I'm just trying to remember who all of them are. Can I come in? I don't know what you came to me to talk about. But if it's regarding your feelings about Daniel, I'd rather it wait until tonight's gathering. What the fuck, you bitch? Oh, that wasn't why I came by, but thank you for telling me. If you're just stopping by to say hello, I have a bit more to do before the evening arrives. Perhaps you should just stop by some other time. I don't know what the fuck her problem is. It's almost seven, you whore! In ten minutes! Fucker, I'm gonna stand right outside your front door until you let me the fuck in. Stupid bitch. I'm sorry, I'm being really mean to Brie, but she was really mean to me last time. Oh. She was sitting on the staircase. <laughs> I mean, I do that too, but still. Alright, let's, uh, let's cheer everyone up. Hey, Gabby. Damn, she's looking good. Edie, you weren't even in this show. Hey, what's up? Her daughter's, like, excuse me. Not too much. How about you? How are you holding up? What do you mean when you say holding up? What? I was just trying to be nice. This is a difficult time for all of us. I just want to make sure you're holding up all right. That's all. There isn't anything really bothering me about it. I don't know what else to tell you. Jeez. Uh, for starters, you can tell me what makes you think you need to keep things from me. You're gonna have to try harder than that, Gabrielle. I'm sorry, but I don't know if I believe you. You know, I get enough people asking me how I feel these days. Do us both a favor and don't add your name to the list. What the hell? Why is everyone a bitch all of a sudden? Why don't you talk and I listen? If we don't talk about it, how am I going to help? You and Daniel had a lot in common, didn't you? Ooh, yes, let's do this. Daniel was just a neighbor. People come and go. Usually they just move. This time it was just a little more uh, exciting than usual. Wow. From what I could tell, the two of you had a real connection in fashion. Did anyone ever tell you that you could be a cold bitch sometimes, Gabby? Oh, I can't wait to say that. And how does his passing make you feel? Well, I'll say one thing. He was the only person around here with any taste. I'll definitely miss that. What else? Excuse me? Right. Oh, no offense, of course. Oh, yeah, none taken. Of course. Why would I possibly be offended? You only just said I have awful taste. Okay, good. It's just that Carlos says that I don't think before I speak. But he can be such an idiot sometimes. Well, I mean, he's not wrong. But yeah, I'll miss him. And the collection of samples he kept in the basement. I wonder if he left them to me in as well. Without him, I'll never be able to start that clothing line we talked about. I was going to be the face and he was going to be the brains. Not that I couldn't do it all myself, of course. Uh, yeah, sure. The clothing line, right. Yes, that is unfortunate. We all had a connection with Dan, and he's a very likable person. Well, fashion isn't everything, Gabby. I'm sure you have other fond memories of him, don't you? I had a friend of mine drop a business plan, and I took some new pictures for the cover of the catalog. She cannot think about anyone but herself. That's great. So what else do you remember about Daniel? He's the one we're here for. Um, it sounds like the two of you had big plans, but what are you planning on doing for yourself now? I certainly can't go into business on my own. Where am I going to find another premier fashion designer in this town? 
I thought you just said that you could. Now that he's gone, I have to find something else to do with my spare time. If I'm not careful, I'll be scouting out the high school football team again. Oops. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Oh, God. What? We all have our coping mechanisms, but don't feel as though you have to use materialism as a crutch, Gabrielle. So this is hug, this is slap. I can't wait to slap her. Don't worry. I don't feel that way at all. What, 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 what's going on? That's the most awkward hug I have ever seen. We're all here to help each other. Um, right now you can help by finding me a new business partner. The old one quit on me. Wow. I'm really tall. Edie, what up, girl? Let me console you. So, you're here too, huh? Well, are you kidding? Like I'd pass up a chance to have one of Bree's four course gourmet meals. Of course, a dear friend is gone. How could I not come? Poor Edie. Did Daniel's death really hit you that hard? To be honest, Bree's cooking was the deciding factor for me. But I prefer to look at it like this. He came, he sewed, he croaked. In that order. Oh, God. It's also morbid. I think it's high time the rest of us get back to living it up. Yeah, we all need to move on in one way or another. That's one way of looking at it. You're right, Edie. It has been one whole day since Daniel was killed. We should really move on. Wouldn't want to miss out on the episode of S Secret Screams or anything important like that. There's a whole world of things we could be doing right now instead of sitting around crying into our drinks. <sighs> okay. I'd prefer to help my friends deal with this tragedy. Some of us are taking it pretty hard, Edie. What did you have in mind? Like what? Personally, I think we should forget the grieving process and try to get to the bottom of Daniel's murder. If you ask me, I think that brother of his is to blame. He's always acting so weird. I really like her dress, honestly. Mind you, he's not Zach Young weird, but give him some time and they'll be fighting for the Wisteria Lane weirdo crown. Oh my god. Believe me when I say you don't have a clue as to what's going on with that case. Yee, that's a very rude thing to say. That's easily the most... Asinine? Interesting, I've never seen that word before. Asinine thing I've heard all week. And believe me, living on this street, I hear some incredibly stupid things. I'm very surprised my character knows the word asinine. Like, I've never even heard of it. <laughs> like, I've never come across it in any kind of literature that I've read before. Maybe I'm reading the wrong type of shit, but still. Oh, please, you don't know any more than I do. Okay, right now, sorry, I'm, like, writing different things. Um, hopefully, like, I don't, I don't want to, like, write the same thing to everyone. But, um, like, it's a very small card, and I'm just hoping that, like, it all fits and, like, making it, like, work for everyone. Anyway, sorry. I'll bet Frank's the kind of sicko that actually enjoys playing Little Mr. Innocent while everyone else is running around town looking for the real killers. Whatever. Oh, shit, I was supposed to be a bitch to her this whole time. There's just no reasoning with you, is there? All right, that's it. Hey! Ha, bitch. This is destroying Frank. The people that killed Daniel were actually looking for him. Well, I... I, I just... Well, you should have said that in the first place. I have completely forgot that I was supposed to be a bitch to her. You know what? I think you said more than enough. Edie, sometimes you can be a callous, ignorant bitch. And in this case, you're too ignorant to know any better. And this is one of those times. And in case you're too ignorant. Not in this case, in case. I have nothing more to say to you. Okay, cool. That was fun. Who should I console next? Who's this? Lynette? Let's go to Lynette. Hi. Um, hey Lynette. Sorry we haven't had a chance to catch up. Bree sort of made me the unofficial therapist for science festivities. Hi Lynette. Lynette, how are you doing? Considering what happened to Daniel, it's amazing I'm here at all. Tom had to talk me down from buying a house in one of those godforsaken gated communities. I actually don't like gated communities that much. I've um, lived in one a couple of times, and like it's not even like a rich neighborhood kind that I lived in, but like it was one, and it was just annoying. All I'm thinking about is poor Daniel. He was such a good friend, and he was so good to us. I know, if I didn't love Wisteria Lane and all you girls so much, I would do the same thing. You're perfectly justified for feeling that way, Lynette. Sometimes just talking about it with someone is beneficial. Well, Bree said we should bring it all out into the open, which is so unlike Bree. She's usually so uptight. To be honest, 
Tom and I are convinced she doesn't even go to the bathroom. Duh, lol. Can you believe something so horrible happened on our street? Okay, let's talk about how foolish we were to think we were safe living in this bubble. I mean, truth is, there's no such thing as being absolutely safe. It's really scary. I have four beautiful, albeit annoying, kids. I think that's what proves that she's like an actual parent. I've like, I think it was Louis C.K. who was just like, if you haven't given the middle finger to your kid in like the back of your mind at least four times in your life, then like you're not really a parent. But it's true. Like, I mean, I would love to have a nanny believe me because I would love to like get away from it all because I'm pretty sure like motherhood is going to be really, really tough. But, um,. <laughs> Yeah, this is how you know. Like, she was a stay-at-home mom, now, like, Tom's staying at home, now they balance each other out, whatever. Anyways, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize this whole ordeal had such an impact on you. Wow, you really, you sound really shaken up by this. I didn't know you felt that way. I'm sorry to dump it all on you like that, but that's how I feel. All mothers develop their own form of acute paranoia. It's instinctual, but now there's a tangible reason for it. What if... What if my boys had snuck out of the house that night? I, I don't even want to think about it. Actually, Lynette, from what I heard, there were a lot of people out that night. I think Daniel was the target, no one else. Okay, then let's talk about something else. They're kids, you can't watch them 24 hours a day. Although, you might want to think about those kids' leashes they sell. I don't know. With all that's happened to Mary Ellis and then Rex, I'm thinking the street might be cursed or something. At least in a gated community, there's some real sense of security. Did she just call her Mary Ellis? <laughs> Come on, Lynette, you're overreacting. Oh, Lynette, you'll work yourself sick if you keep thinking like that. I don't think I'm being unreasonable. Who says you're being unreasonable? Here, let me give you an awkward hug that you probably don't want. See, she's at least like facing me a little bit. It's not the kind of thing that's going to happen again, I'm, prom I'm positive. Daniel's murder was an isolated incident, I assure you. I talked to a police officer, with a police officer and a few other people today. Those people that murdered Daniel aren't coming back. I take it you know something I don't. Yes, I'm sure they won't show their faces around here anytime soon. I do and there's nothing to be concerned about. Yep, sure do, but I'm not at liberty to say what that something is. Well, if that really is the case, and it wasn't a random act of violence, then it certainly puts my mind at ease. Thanks. Good, good, good. All right. Um, who's next? Bree. Oh God, you've been a bitch to me lately, you whore. Hello. Can I help you? Look at Danielle. She's so out of place here. She's not even wearing a fox dress. Psh, nerd. Hi, Bree. How are you holding up, given all the recent events? And by that, I assume you mean the brutal murder of Daniel Fox in our own neighborhood. What else do you think I'm talking about? Yes, that's what I meant. Well, that's one way of putting it. Well, yes. Well, to be honest, his death caused me to examine certain aspects of my own life. So I immediately went out and bought another shotgun. That said, I think there really is more going on here than meets the eye. I simply don't believe it was a random act of violence. Our friend and neighbor is dead, Brie. Isn't that enough reason to grieve? Did you hear something? Just because you weren't close to him doesn't mean we should start dissecting his personal life. Oh, come now. Are you telling me you're not the least bit curious about how it all transpired? Was he pumped for information? Did he have something they wanted? Oh, perhaps he even owed them money that was borrowed to support some reprehensible drug habit. I have no words for Brie. I really don't. You seem like you're more interested in getting details about his death than you are coping with the loss, Bree. Um, Bree, wasn't it your idea to have this bereavement party? For the record, you're not coming across as the most compassionate person at the moment, Bree. Now, don't get me wrong. It's quite unfortunate Daniel had to pass in the manner he did. But at the same time, can you honestly tell me you're not even the slightest bit curious as to just what went on in that house? I mean, for heaven's sake. Why would Daniel, of all people, have need for a gun? Makes you wonder about what else was going on in the Fox house. I would love nothing than to slap her, but I made a promise that I would be nice to her. Stop wondering and get back to reality. 
Come here, Bree. I know just what you need. Oh boy, I can't wait to see this hug. What I need? <laughs> hug me. You have to understand, when Daniel died, he left a gap in our lives that'll take a long time to heal. We all have different ways of mourning the loss of a friend. I'm sure that you think it doesn't bother you, but trust me, Daniel's murder will affect you. It, may, might, whoops, it might be in ways that you're not even aware. I don't suppose I ever looked at it that way. But in all fairness, you have to admit we are in the midst of a very strange situation here. I was just trying to help, Brie. I never meant to hurt your feelings. It is a very strange situation, but we're here to help each other through it. Hurt her feelings? She's hurting my feelings all the time. Fucking whore. All right, Susan, let's talk to you. Gabrielle. Hey there. Hey, Susan, how are you? Susan, are you all right? You look just awful. That's terrible. I feel just fine. That's it? I have to say, I'm a bit distraught. Really? About what? Over oh, Daniel, I know, but what in particular? Well, then it's good that you came out tonight. What's on your mind? Just everything, I guess. She's being so cryptic. I mean, Daniel was such a sweet man. And charming, and witty. He was like one of the girls. <laughs> sort of. We even invited him to poker night. And we don't do that for just anyone, you know. Who would want to do something like that to someone like him? I wish I knew, but it's good that you're sharing your feelings. Don't let me stop you. I can't really say that I know, Susan. People like that don't need a reason to do the things they do, and it's a shame. <sighs> Sometimes, it just seems like there isn't any kind of justice in the world. That is so fucking true. I don't know what he could have possibly done to his assailants, but he didn't deserve to die over it. You're right, Susan. No one deserves that. You're such a whiner, Susan. Okay, um, even though I'm gonna slap her in the next, um, you know, reality that I'm gonna post up, I feel so, I would feel so bad about slapping Susan. It's not enough that so much shit goes bad in her life. Thanks. It's nice to know there's someone that understands what I'm going through. I think that's the best hug of the day, you guys. Like this, I think I should dump Lance Bass and get together with Susan Mayer, and we will make wonderful um, half babies with each other. Like, someone will impregnate Susan, and she'll give birth to one of our babies, and then he will impregnate me, and then they'll look like each other. And like us, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful match in heaven. I'm just saying, Susan Mayer... And Nostalgia Princess, for the win, they are the ultimate beautiful couple. That was a heart that I just drew above their heads. I can see why Bree invited you over. You always know just what to say. We should go on a date sometime. You're more than welcome, Susan. What can I say? I have a way with people. Thanks, Susan, but I'm just doing what any good friend would do. <laughs> Why do I need to console Gabrielle again? Do I need to fucking slap her or something? Why do I need to console her? I've already consoled her. Do I need to slap her? Like, do some of the people just need to be slapped? The fuck? I know what you're gonna say, and no, I really don't want to talk about Daniel anymore. Why not? He was a good guy and a great potential business partner, but he's gone now. So what's the point of dwelling on the past? You're a piece of work, you know that, Gabrielle? Apparently I need to slap her. What? Ow! What's with you? He was a human being, Gabrielle. Try to remember that. Do us all a favor and keep your self-absorption under control for one day, would you? Daniel was more than just a means to fame and fortune. He was a friend. Yeah, I like that one. Listen, Miss Thing. You're in no position to judge. The fuck, Gabby? I'm not judging, I'm helping. Who's judging? Right. Well, thanks. That's how I consoled her? Dude, she f I got fucking kicked out just because of that. I am not going to sleep with Carl. Not now. Maybe later. 